Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name's Kayleen and I'm your host. I am bringing you a long way to podcast. <laughs> um, it's been a little while. I did a live stream last week, which felt really good, but it was about a month gap between the last time I uploaded and the live stream. So I had some quiet time today. Tuck's napping. It's beautiful. It's bright in here. So I wanted to get a podcast filmed for you guys and share with you the things that I've been working on. I have only one piece of knitting, like hand knitting, that I've been working on. So I'll show you that. That's my changes shawl. And then I've done some machine knitting. I got a new flatbed, so I'll talk about that. And then I just wanted to talk about all the yarn that I've been dyeing over the last month or so and to show you the things that are in stock in my shop so that you have a really good idea of what's there before you head on over. So Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we are handling the transition to spring in a relatively nice manner. Uh, although over the last couple of months we've had some hiccups between illness and also a small car accident. We're okay. I talked about it on the live stream, but it's a bit of a fender bender. Kind of told my car, but it was really low speed. Everybody's fine. But um, it's taken a little while for us to all kind of get back on our feet, get back in the groove. We just had school vacation week last week. So this is the first week that we are really um, kind of back at it again. So Cece's back to school. Tucker's on his normal schedule. And finally, finally, spring has sprung. So uh, we're all excited about that here. And I hope you are as well. Anyway, uh, let's get into everything. So in terms of life updates, that's pretty much it. We are just kind of rolling along as we go. Uh, I've been trying to die as much as I can when I have time, uh, when, I, when I'm when i not dealing with a sick child or my other sick child or I'm not sick or we're not in a car accident and it's not school vacation, you know, um, just trying to manage my time as best I can. So thank you guys for bearing with me and thank you for continuing to subscribe and support my channel and support my little shop. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me because something I really love to do. So I'm um, happy to be here again. Uh, and then in terms of shop news, I did a small dye up last week on some Lux Sock, which is an MCN base. It is so squishy. I cannot wait to show you what I dyed on it. It is just like, ooh, like you just want to take it and rub it all over your face, Mina Phillips style. So, um, so yeah, I'll show you that stuff. But in the meantime, let me show you what I've been working on, what's on my needles today. I've been working on, actually, Mina Phillips pattern, the Changes Shawl. Uh, for those who have not heard of it before, it is a shawl pattern. It's a four skein shawl pattern or 400 gram shawl pattern uh, that Mina Phillips released. And I'll put a picture here of the shawl. Um, it is pretty much a rectangular type wrap, except it goes into a rectangle with points at the end. And you start from the center and you work your way out one side and then the other side. So you don't really have too many stitches on the needles at once, which I really, really like, uh, considering it is such a large project. But I feel like I can work on it and just continue along. You know, I don't have feel like oh, I have to stop or it's in the middle of a row. You know, the rows are a manageable size for me. So I feel like instead of a 600 stitch slog, it's, you know, a 200 stitch speedy row. So, um, but yeah, let me show you how far I've gotten on it and the yarn that I'm using. Here we are. Back again. Back again. Okay. So, um, here's the bag that it's in. I've kind of shoved a couple of projects in here, but um, the yarn that I'm using is my own hand dyed yarn. I dyed up some gradient sets, so I'll put a picture here, uh, like a little product shot that I did when I dyed the yarn and posted it for sale. Of the four kits that I dyed, I chose one myself to stitch up and I chose the uh, gray kind of putty color to stitch because I thought I would enjoy it more than uh, stitching on some dark yarn. I think both of them are going to be beautiful. Um, so the darker one, I would anticipate it's going to look a lot like stained glass. And then this one is kind of like a cloudy sky with like a rainbow running through it. So Mina's original pattern calls for two 100 gram, at least 460 yard tonal skeins. So she was using, I can't remember the yarn, if I remember, I'll put it on the screen here. Um, she used their yarn, which is a slightly heavier weight. I think it's 115 gram skein or a, like a full four ounce skein. 
Um, but my sock yarn has 463 yards, so I thought it would be a perfect fit for the pattern. So it called for two tonal skeins, and then it called for 10 20 gram mini skeins. And in each section of the pattern, you work through each of the 10 mini skeins. For me, I didn't want to do it that way only because I hate ends, I hate weaving ends, I hate cutting yarn. Any like if I can work with a gradient versus working with mini skeins, I will do it any day. And it's only because I loathe weaving in ends and it is the neighbors leaving. Uh, it is the one thing that I really dislike. So that's why I when I um, dyed up my set, I dyed up the two tonal skeins and then two 100 gram gradients that were identical gradients. So it was 50 grams from the first and 50 grams from the second for each side. So I will show you the yarn that I am using without pulling out any stitches, right? That's the goal. Okay, so so this is the yarn that I'm using. Um, so this is 100 grams total. So this is 50 grams and 50 grams. I dyed a double knit sock blank. So what I did, um, I dyed up the double sock blank and then I re-skeined it into the 250 gram skein. So you have identical gradients that are going to be on either side of the shawl. So you start with the tonal and then you work your first gradient, then your second, and then you work your first gradient, then your second, alternating with your tonal color. So of course, when I sit down to film a podcast, that's what happens. So, okay, so when I try and do anything, that's what happens. Let's just be honest. Okay, so I'll show you the yarn up close. So this went from a nice, let's see if we can get this focus. There we go. Uh, it went from a nice, I'm already into the orange, so a ruddy orange going into a more yellow, orange, and yellow, a lighter green, and then a darker green. Um, so that was the first gradient. And then the second gradient goes from the same green color to um, blues, teals, and then into some dark purples. And then the end of the purple has a bit of a pink cast because I used the same pink that I began uh, this gradient with to kind of go over the dye. So it would tie in, so you could do it in either direction. You could either, you know, go from purple to like a reverse rainbow, or you could do um, you start at green, go to purple, then you change to pink, and then you go all the way to green again. Um, you know, you can work them a whole bunch of different ways. You can start with the green coming out in the middle and alternate skeins. You know, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. So, um, I chose to run each 50 grams down the shawl. So I start with this until this is gone, and then I'll start this until this is gone. So let me show you the shawl itself. It is... A bit large for my 40 inch circulars um, to kind of stretch it out. It's like I can get it to stretch out, but I like worry that it's just gonna fall right off. So here's the gigantic piece that it is. All right, ooh, 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 okay. We're gonna do this the right way. We're not gonna drop it. We're gonna be professional podcasters. Okay, <clears throat> so the center square, I'm a loose knitter generally. Um, so here's the center square. It looks a bit rectangular-ish, but as I knit on the other side, it will kind of square itself out, and when I block it, it will square out. Um, the stitch count is correct. Everything is correct. It's just the nature of the shawl. And then here's the going out part. So here's the... <laughs> Uh, difficult thing. Okay, so here's the top edge of the shawl. There's an applied eye cord that goes all the way down the edge of the shawl. And I really should have put this on holders, but we work with what we've got. So it kind of is on the bias. So the center, I'm doing an awful job of showing this, guys. I'm so sorry. A lot of practice, guys. So this is the center of like the spine of the shawl is where these increases are and so the center looks like I don't put a picture here as I poorly describe it but the center looks like a little bit of a diamond or I guess like that like a diamond and as it goes out it goes out like this and then it, it goes out like that all the way to the end and then it, 
and I'm not describing it. Oh my god, I'm so out of practice. It starts as a diamond. Well, it starts as a square. You turn it, and then you start working outwards like, uh, like an arrow. Boop, 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 boop. Each row goes out, 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 and then you turn the shawl, and then you work up the side, and you pick up the stitches, and then you turn the shawl, and you work up the side, and you pick up the stitches. So it ends up being still that same shape, but just not as pointed. It ends up being like a little more like a rectangle. It comes to a shallower, shallower point. <sighs> Can you tell I'm out of practice? I'm out of practice. So, um, so that's the progress I've made on the shawl. So I'm on the first section of section B. So this is side one. So B1 is my, the section I'm on. Here's the center spine. And it's a bit of a, like a waffly texture, and you can see how lofty the fabric is. I am a loose knitter. I did the whole thing so far on size fours because I'm trying to be cognizant of my tension, and it was what made the most sense uh, for me. Mina has you start on a size five, and then move down to a size four, and then back up to a size five for different sections based on um, the types of stitches that she's doing but I know that my gauge is going to be looser. When I knit my exploration station, I did not block it. I knit it to the blocked dimensions. That's how loose my gauge is. And it's because I knit continental and it is how I hold my yarn. So here's the changes shawl and you can see how large it is. I mean, it's, it's quite large at this point and I've only made it into section B, but it's going really quickly when I have time to knit on it. It's very pleasurable. You know, the, the yarn and the repeats go by really quickly. So you can see you alternate back and forth between the main color and your contrast color. And so in her pattern, you know, you're going through the mini skeins. So you're changing out the mini skeins when it tells you to change them in the pattern. But for me, I'm not changing any yarn. I'm just running the gradient as it goes. So I've just made it into the orange. I went from... The reds are hard to pick up on this camera, but it's pink to red to a ruddy orange, and then it will go out from there to yellow. Um, and I'll put a picture of the gradient itself here with the, the contrast, the main color yarn that I put on Instagram. <clears throat> so yeah, so that's what I'm working up now, and it's the only project I'm working on actively because it's the only thing that I can really focus on to do. So I am going to be caking this up soon and then I'll start the other side once I'm finished. But I'm not in a rush to finish it. I'm enjoying working on it, and so I am just trying to enjoy the process and just move through it as I see fit. Um, so yeah, I do want to use this to kind of segue a little into shop news. I did dye up those kits. I dyed up um, four kits for the shawl, and I took one of them for myself to knit. Uh, so I will be dyeing up four more kits, two in the dark and two in the light, for those who might be interested. If there's more interest for that, maybe I can open up pre-orders or do a third dye up, which is totally fine. Uh, but I am expecting yarn to come in on Wednesday, and I've had some folks asking for it. So um, if there's a kit that you're more interested in, whether it's the darker kit or the lighter kit, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll take that into account when I'm doing my dye up. If I need to dye more than two kits of each. I may dye up four kits of each, just depending on what the demand might be because I'm not entirely sure. So uh, please do let me know that in the comments. Okay, so I'm um, going to take a quick break to have a little drink of water and I'm going to show you what I've been machine knitting. Okay, so I got a flatbed machine. What's one more knitting implement? Let's just say that. Um, <clears throat> I've been wanting to get one for a while now. I've kind of been price watching to see what would be the best time to get one, which one should I get. Um, I've worked with obviously my sock machine, but I've never worked with a flatbed machine before. So I didn't want to buy like a more vintage one because I don't know everything that goes into it. I'd rather purchase something new <clears throat> and then 
If I need to upgrade, I will and I can sell my old machine because it is a really good machine. It's a workhorse um, mid-gauge machine. It's a Silver Reed LK450. So it's just a mid-gauge machine. It doesn't do anything fancy. You can do color work. You can do tuck stitches. Uh, you can do plating or plaiting. I don't know how you say that, but it's when you're knitting the two strands at the same time. So one strand stays on the front and it's the knit side and one strand is on the back and it's the purl side. It's actually a really cool technique. Um, I, d I dare not go get, there's a huge pile of like practice over there in the kitchen. Um, but I do want to show you some things that I've been working on it. Uh, I was inspired to just go out and do it by Adrian over at the Freakish Lemon podcast. If you've never watched his podcast, then you really should. Uh, if you're a fan of Star Wars, you definitely will like his podcast. Um, so he's been knitting on... Uh, the same machine, Silver Reed, and he's been working on blankets and different sweaters. And the car is outside, just starting up. It's great. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it was really inspirational to me just to just go do it. Why, why are you waiting? Why are you waiting? You just want it, then you just just do it. If you don't like it, then you just sell the machine. There's no, nothing to lose. So I thought I would be able to use it to make samples and maybe some garment pieces that I would otherwise not have enough time to knit for myself. Um, I really do love knitted garments. I just wish I had more time on my hands to do so. So these are the things I've been working on. I did a whole bunch of different cowls and I did some sample swatches. So I'm going to show you the first sample swatch. Not the first sample swatch. Let's be real. The first sample swatch I did was really ugly, but it was learning the tension of the machine. So the yarn sits behind the machine, goes up through a guide wire and into a tensioning arm that kind of pinches the yarn between the arm and this like ring. So it holds it really tightly as it goes into the feeding carriage. So unlike the sock machine, when you're doing just circular knitting, you just don't want any tension on it because it's going to change the body of the sock drastically unless you're going back and forth like you are doing on your heel then you put tension on the yarn so what's interesting for the flatbed you always have tension on the yarn because you're constantly going back and forth and the yarn needs to have no slack in it because once you crank across if you have slack in your yarn and you try to go back the yarn won't catch <clears throat> and it will just run across and your whole piece will fall off ask me how i know that happens so uh, i wanted to show you this if you can see right through it. Um, it's a nice lofty little piece. So I worked up, I guess I'll put it up this side. Um, this is Ron Weasley. And I had, I was going to use this for some sock emergency kits. I've had this skein set aside for months. And I thought, why not just use this to practice some flatbed knitting? So I did, I think it's 100 rows across, 100 stitches across. And I just knit a flat stockinette panel. See right there. Maybe this wasn't the best place to film. Um, <clears throat> so you can see all those lovely colors. So Ron is one of my favorite colors to knit with. Um, here's the back. Again, very cool. And then for the edging, I did also on the machine. It is when I finished the piece and I bound off, I did. I put three stitches, I forget what the edging is called, but I put three stitches on the machine, I knit four rows, and then I hung the next three stitches. So it's almost like you're doing an I-cord, but like you're kind of capping off the ends of the rows so that it, it, it sits basically flat. So I did block this out, not aggressively, I just kind of wet it and laid it so that the edges would lay flat, and so that this edging would have a chance to do its job. So this is probably good enough you know, for a small blankie, for a baby, for a stroller, something like that. So I just wanted to show you that all knit up. It's really pretty. I love this color. Um, but yeah, it's it's also hard to catch all the subtleties on camera, um, the different variations in tone in the orange. It doesn't always pick up. Uh, this camera doesn't like to pick up those things very well, so this always looks better in person, at least to me personally. Anyway, so this was one thing that I worked up. And then I decided to knit up this as a kind of like a sampler. So I wanted to try and make a cowl and I wanted to practice seaming on the machine. So what I did, I have some failed cowls that I used a crochet seam, which I hated and I still hate. And that's part of the reason why I never 
made panels with my Addy machine. So I have both the King Size and the Addy Pro, which is the smaller one. And I've never made panels on them because, well, one, it's a lot of cranking for not very much product. And two, I didn't, I hated doing mattress stitch and I don't like doing crochet cat, crochet joints. Can ask me how I'm even a fiber artist. I don't know. <laughs> so um, I thought I would knit this panel. So I did knit the panel flat. This is not my colorway. This is actually from Silent Knits. So Anna is a smaller indie dyer. She's uh, used to work at my local yarn shop. And she also, she lives in New England. She lives in Connecticut right now. And so if you want to check out her shop, please do. But this is one of her colorways. We did a little tradesies when she came to do a trunk show at our shop. And um, I traded her a skein of Fleur, which is a self-striping yarn for this colorway, which is Kaleidoscope Heart. And I thought it would be right up my daughter's alley. So it's a very fun, variegated colorway. It has, you know, lots of just different colors, like pretty much all the colors of the rainbow. So let's see if this will focus on just that. Um, I was very keen to knit it up. So I took the skein, it's fingering weight, and knit it up at the same gauge that I did that Ron Ronald swatch. And when it was finished, I cast it off. So I learned how to do, which side is the cast off side? This one. And I learned how to do a figure eight cast off. So let's see if we can get this to show. So it's, there's the cast off edge, and it's a very stretchy cast off, which I really, really, really liked, and it's really easy to do. And you can use that cast off to also bind edges together, and it, it makes a really interesting bind off. So I'll show you the, um, the not bind off, um, grafting. It makes an interesting graft point. So the inside seam is very shallow. And I think it could easily block out to be almost flat. And then the seam on this side, even though, I mean, you can see the seam because the colors, it's a variegated yarn. If this was just a tonal yarn, you might not be able to see it as well. But because her yarn's variegated, it makes almost this like rainbow sequence on the inside. But you can see here's the, the bind off or the, Grafting. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. I'm having trouble with words today, guys. Okay, so there it is. And so I think it looks really nice. And if it was tonal, you it would be a little bit decorative, but not bulky. I mean, it is literally almost flat. So figure eight, cast off figure eight, um, grafting. I really liked it a lot. I wonder if I can show you this this way. Here it is. So yeah, so this is just a cowl. It's not exactly my style, but I think it's nice. I could give it to my daughter. I think she would really like it. Um, personally, I like to have it a little tighter. And I also, if I don't have it tighter, then I like to wrap it around, but this is just a tiny bit too short to wrap. So, but this was good practice for me. Okay, and then the last thing that I've been machine knitting is a big project. So in one of my yarn groups, I can't remember which one, because there's about a jillion of them, a jillion, and that's a real number too. Don't argue with me. Um, there are lots of them, at least, I think I'm in at least 15 different yarn groups, so. Um, Bren Boone, who is the fiber artist behind Snurb Yarn and Fiber, she's fantastic as well. If you've never heard of her, never purchased any of her yarn, it's in high demand because it's beautiful. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be able to spin with some of her fiber. I have yet to knit with any of her hand-dyed yarn or crochet with her hand-dyed yarn. I definitely look forward to that, but... She is also a fiber <laughs> and yarn tool junkie. She has tons of, you know, different knitting machine. Like she got a knitting machine. She's been doing this beautiful weaving. She does spinning. She's like my fiber muse. She's like who I want to be like. So um, I, she posted this lace weight, lace weight poncho that she did in gray. 
and she did it on her flatbed and it was just a basic flatbed there was nothing uh fancy about it she did it was just plain stocking it the whole way and she gave the schematic for how she did it <clears throat> and so I don't have any lace weight yarn so I was like I can do that in fingering weight on this machine because I've been liking the gauge of the fiber that I uh, of the fabric that I've been able to produce with fingering weight yarn and so I made this poncho I had one time where I was knitting the whole like the first large flat panel which is pretty much all the needles on the machine and you're knitting for like six feet like it's a long panel but um I got maybe a third of the way through and I wasn't paying attention to what was happening on the machine I was going pretty quickly but at a, at a rhythm you know you get the rhythm to go and the yarn didn't catch it went all the way across, dragged the yarn when I knit back, and I didn't realize, and when I knit back, all of the the piece the piece fell just off the machine. And at that point, I had been <laughs> trying to set this up and trying to do this and doing all this practice, that I didn't even have the patience to put it back on. I probably could have put it back on and tried again, but then I would have lost count of how many rows I had. I was like, maybe I was almost halfway through it. I don't know. It was like a long ways in. So I want to show you the poncho. So first I'm going to show a picture of the finished poncho before I dyed it. Um, the, yes, this is a bathroom selfie. <laughs> um, so I did it. I had a cone of yarn and I was like, you know, I'm just going to do it. This is not hard. This is something I could easily do. So let me show you what I knit. So here's the poncho. I dyed it black <laughs> to hide the many errors that are in here. So it's, you know, it's worked flat and then it's seamed here here's the seam so this was before I worked actually you know what I worked on this before I actually finished figured out the seaming I take that back I did this and then I did that cowl because I didn't like this seam that's how crazy okay this is how crazy like my month has been I can't even remember sequence of events so this is the seam here it is and I did a crochet seam so I just took the latch tool and it's a little bit bulky on the seam um, I did have some drop stitches from where I bound off. I did do the figure eight bind off. And then when I wove in the seams, is this the side? No, it's this side. On the cast on edge, I pulled this. So when you cast on, you're casting on every other stitch. And I pulled this pretty much guide strand too tightly. So this side kind of scrunches up on itself a little bit. You can see it here. If I pull it, you can see how it kind of scrunches there. Um, not perfect. I didn't expect it to come out perfect, but it's good enough to gift. And I don't wear ponchos, so I'm gifting this to my brother's girlfriend. But pretty much, throw it on. Yeah, here's the seam down the shoulder. And it kind of lays really, ooh, let's see if I can stand up. It's going to be hard to see because I'm a little bit backlit, but the front of the poncho comes down below my butt. So if you're looking at my rear, the poncho comes down there, like down below my butt. So it's a really good sized poncho, but I'm not necessarily a poncho wearer. Um, I would make another one for myself. I might have one for the winter. I think it would be nice to have something like this for the winter time. But she, my brother's girlfriend works in an office. That's very chilly. And so she said, oh, I would definitely wear this to work. So, poncho done. Feel very accomplished. Feel very happy about it. That's done. Okay, <laughs> so let's get on to some yarn dyeing discussions. I have a lot of things that are in the shop right now, so I'm going to start at the oldest stuff that's been kind of sitting there a little bit, things that I haven't been able to update too much on, and I'm gonna work my way up to the stuff I dyed on Friday, which is just, oh my God, wonderful. So let me get all the stuff, and then we'll be right back. All right, now this huge bag of yarn, this is literally one of all the colorways that I have in the shop. This bag, oh, I can tell you a little bit about this bag. So the bag that it's in right now is a bag that I ordered. So I ordered some tote bags and some notebooks. 
some pencils. And if you follow me on Instagram, not pencils, pens. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen them posted maybe like a month and a half ago or so. But I intended to make some kits. So like having a bag with a notebook and a pen uh, with the Little Bean logo on it, maybe as like a gift kit. So, a, you know, a bag that's big enough to fit any size project pretty much, you know, within reason, like a shawl or like a small sweater. Um, so I got these bags back from the printer and I did not like the way that this dark fabric came out with the printing. So um, <laughs> let me show you that first. Ooh, I'm dropping all the yarn. Okay, this is better. So um, I ordered two black bags and here's the logo and the information. Get yourself together, Kayleen. You're back at podcasting. Get back in the practice. Okay, so here is the bag. So the bag is pretty. I don't like how this color looks. This is not right. So it's supposed to be a full color transfer onto the fabric. It shouldn't alter the color. It should be professional quality transfer. So meaning that the transfer is opaque and it's not going to be altered by the underlying fabric. This is altered. So this is really dusty pink. I don't know how much you can tell here how dusty it is. But I also ordered a light colored bag, which I like a lot more. And you can see that the color is much more vibrant and it's the correct color. So this is actually the color of my logo and this is not. And it's not just because it is, I keep hitting the microphone. It's not just because you're looking at it on a light background. If you actually fold the fabric over, I'm actually using this as the diaper bag right now, free advertising. <laughs> um, so it, if you fold the fabric over and you compare um, what this looks like versus that, you can see the shade difference. And I can put the picture here. I took a photo and I sent it to the printer and I said, this isn't like how it's supposed to be. They gave me a refund. I got to keep the product, but um, it's not something that I'm going to sell to you or give away. So I'm going to use it. <laughs> so right now I have all the yarn in this bag. Um, and then I have my pens, which I've been using. Uh, let's see if I can get this to show on camera. And it just says, Little Bean Loves Yarn. I also got thank you stickers, which if you've ordered from me recently, you've seen these little stickers. I love it. I've been wanting to reorder um, thank you stickers because I've just been using the generic ones that come from Amazon, but I wanted it to have my logo. So I did get them with my logo. And then these are the notebooks. And again, it's crisp, but it's not the right color. This is all dusky. It, 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 it literally is like you can see through the transfer. So I'm really disappointed because I really like these notebooks, but I'm not, I'm not going to sell them. I'll just use them. But it just was, you know, just to be like a knitting journal or something. So anyway, <laughs> segue over. People have been asking about them, but I just don't, the pens I like, but I don't feel comfortable selling the notebooks um, or the bags because they, like the quality just isn't there. I like this bag. This bag was out of stock in the light color. If it comes back in stock in the light color, then I might order some. Um, and put it as like a free gift with purchase if you purchase over a certain amount or you can purchase one if you want But it's nice. It's thin. It's kind of you know, it's like that easy wear like kind of um, Material it's cotton and there's a zipper on it. So all right normally I don't keep tons of stock on hand, but because I haven't been dying on the regular um, I have been keeping stock on hand. I've only been promoting when I have time and I haven't really been able to kind of like put kits together and do all these fun things. So I wanted to let you know what's there because some of you guys only follow me here and I wanted to make sure that you're up to date with what's in the shop. I have a lot of sock yarn in stock. I have everyday sock, a ton of colors, and I also have sparkle sock in several colors as well. For example, one of my most favorite and cherished colors is prongs, and I have some available on Sparkle. That's just sitting in the shop. There's a couple skeins of it. Um, it is quite twinkly and lovely, and I love it. Then we also have birthday sprinkles. This is also a favorite of mine. 
you know, it's just lovely. It's got like chartreuse and bright blue and this plummy purple. It's just fantastic. But it, it doesn't need to be your birthday to get some birthday sprinkles. I don't think so. All right. And then we are going to get into <clears throat> the last dye up that I did of Everyday Sock. I did the Four Houses and uh, the Marauders plus a couple of extra colors that were requested. So I did like seven or eight colorways and most of them on Everyday Sock. I had a couple on DK, uh, Merino DK, which is 115 gram, 250 yard DK weight yarn. So let me show you what I have here. I'm gonna do my best. So here we go, we have Padfoot. So Padfoot is a lovely um, yarn, it has blue, and gray speckles. It's pretty simple in terms of color palette, but it's a staple for me. I love this color. I think it goes well with so many other colors and it's a great color to tie in if you're doing a fade or if you're doing a pattern that calls for a tonal and then this type of yarn, like a speckled yarn or variegated yarn, it's beautiful. So if navy is your thing, this really is a good colorway. I love it. So it's pad foot. Then we have here, this one is Cunning. So Cunning is the Slytherin House colorway. And it is colored green and black. So there are several shades of green in here. I think two or three different shades of green and black. And it's very speckled and lovely. I think I'm going to say lovely for every single one of these yarns, so bear with me. Uh, so we want to check out speckles there and it is on a neutral base so uh, it's not like too dark gray black heavy it's more of like more delicate it's not super delicate but it's not super overly saturated with color because the base is still um, the neutral base the ecru base so there's cunning and then we have one of my most favorite and cherished colorways ever which is wormtail wormtail has this um, dark green and it also has blue and this kind of greenish yellow like a wheat weedy weedy looking yellow Let's see if I can show you a nice side of the skein when I skein this up I just um, you know I did it up but I didn't do it um, to show off the speckles but here's a really good sign of the speckles here so again, it's on a cream base, and it's got the green and the blue, and this greenish yellow color. And it's pretty delicate in terms of speckling. It's not going to be heavily variegated, but it will speckle, and it will give lots of interest. I also like this color as a tie-in because it, it has, you know, complementing, not complementing colors, but related colors like the blue and the green are pretty similar um, you can find them in a bunch of different yarns and so it's a very beautiful yarn for a really awful character let's just let's just be honest there so I also like this color to tie in with other colors uh, let us see we have loyalty so loyalty is the Hufflepuff uh, colorway uh, it's on a creamy base, so a more yellow-toned base with darker yellow and black speckling, black and gray speckling. So this color should look familiar if you've been following for a little while. I did a dye along with these colors, and I liked it so much that I wanted to make it the Hufflepuff color. So it was a picture of a black and white street with yellow cars, and so... I changed the color slightly to make it the Hufflepuff color, but I do have this in stock as well. I've had a couple people reach out that they love this color yellow. I do too, it's my favorite color yellow. I use it all the time <laughs> whenever there's a yellow in one of my colorways. Uh, this is Mooney. I don't even need to look at the name for this one. So this is a navy, and kind of like an apple -y green and a sandy brown. It's delicately speckled as well. <laughs> He's sensing a theme. Also on a creamy base, um, but more of a neutral. It kind of leans a little more gray, gray, gray to ecru. 
um, because of the, the brown that's in here, but it's very beautiful. It's a nice masculine color, but not, again, not overly saturated, not overly variegated where you're just confused by what it, what is this color. Um, <clears throat> All right, this this yarn, this was my portal inspired colorway, but it was also kind of a joke because it was when the Tide Pod challenge was happening, uh, which is, this is called Do Not Eat This Yarn, and it literally is the two colors of Tide Pods, which is a red, orange, and a blue, a bright blue. And so um, it is, it was originally dyed as a portal colorway, but I thought it would be funnier to name it Do Not Eat This Yarn because, well, if you're a teenager, you should be wanting to eat those Tide Pods, I guess. I don't know. So yeah, so there's the colors. Very speckly. It's on more of a grayed, grayed out base. Not as bright as the other colors, but still, <clears throat> still very lovely and speckled. Okay, here we go. We have, oh, this is Intelligence. So this is the Ravenclaw colorway. So we have its bronze and blue, which are the house colors. This is a little more intense than some of the other colors. Speckled, but again, quite lovely. And again, on a creamy base. So it won't be too heavy in terms of when you knit it or crochet it up. Uh, but I love this color. It leans similar to Wormtail. But I think that is because I didn't get enough, I didn't get as much green as I normally get in Wormtail. And so when I photographed them, they looked kind of similar, even though in real life they look different. Um, yeah, but this has the more bronze color. So this was using a couple different shades of brown to make those speckles. All right, there's only one skein of this left. And I'm surprised that it even exists. Uh, this is one of my most requested colorways, and it's a colorway that I don't dye often because it requires a few steps, but it is one of my most favorite colorways because of the palette. I don't enjoy using pooling yarns, but I do love this yarn. So this is called Never Say Die. This was a Stranger Things inspired colorway. Also the Goonies. Goonies Never Say Die, right? So... <clears throat> It is green and blue and red and yellow with a gray overcast kind of feel. This is the last game. So if you want it, it's yours. <laughs> Just come on by the shop. Um, it's beautiful. I love it. Uh, this is Ron Weasley. So you see it here as it lays in the skein and you've seen it knit up. Um, it is another one of my most requested colorways. I love it so very much. There are three different colors in here to make this and it's gorgeous. Oh, another another fan favorite and one of my favorites. So this is a more variegated yarn versus a speckled yarn. This is Molly Weasley. It is a peach and sand color and a gray, cool gray. Uh, very, very lovely and delicate. So yeah, so it's variegated, but it's not overly variegated, but it's it's not quite speckled either. All right. Then we have Courage. So this Courage, uh, normally when I dye it, it comes up. I usually have a bit more spreading of color, and this I didn't in this batch, which is okay. Um, you can see the palette there. Looks quite lovely. Got the dark brown and the red and the yellow. Um, but it's because I've started using lids on my pants when I dye, just because of the environment generally. I don't want my kids running in and out of the kitchen when I'm dying, and I've got all the steam coming up, and I don't want them breathing that in. So I cover my pants now, which means that my speckles not die and strike a lot faster, so I have less spreading. So the next dye up of this will probably be more along the lines of what it usually looks like, but it is just red and yellow and uh, brown and it's very beautiful. So this is Courage, uh, Gryffindor colorway by the way, my house. All right, okay, we're down to the wire here. So those are all the older colors that have kind of been sitting and languishing in the shop. Uh, I have maybe one or two skeins of each available. So if you're interested, you, you're more than welcome to come. Um, head on over to the shop. If you click the iCard up here, it will take you right to the shop. And so uh, I just wanted to show all of that again because 
some of you guys only follow me here and so if you haven't seen those colors before now you have now you know they're in the shop and they're there for you so then let's get into the dye that we had this weekend so <clears throat> I have this, which looks like a bunch of black on screen right now, but it's actually three slightly different colors of black or gray, kind of like a charcoal-y color, a little bit more of a saturated color, and then as close to black as you can without quite being black um, on DK weight that I listed as in one-of-a-kind trio. Uh, when I dyed that poncho, I used these skeins to draw up the extra dye from the dye bath, and they came out into like a gradient because I altered a... Um, sequentially put the skeins in to soak up the extra dye. So this one went in first, this one went in second, and this one went in last. Um, and so I have these three up there as a set, and I think it's a good staple to have, uh, whether you use them in the same project or you do not, uh, having some standard black or charcoal yarn is really helpful. So those are also in the shop. Now, the MCN that I dyed, there, you have never felt anything so soft in your life, I swear to you. I, if I could only knit in MCN, I would. I, I, I just, oh, uh, like, I, I'm going to squish this now. <laughs> Trigger warning. If you're triggered by squishing yarn, don't watch this part. You've been warned. <laughs> but, like, you squish it, and it's just, like, it just has this, like, plush, plushness. That's the word I'm looking for. So this is Mimble Wimble. And it is like as as plush and fluffy as you can be. This base is one of the most expensive bases that I carry. This in my silk base because I wanted the softest, most absolutely luxurious. Like if I'm going to have a luxury base, like if I'm not going to die just on plain merino or like a plain wool and I'm going to have a luxury fiber, I want it to be like the best feeling base that I've ever felt. So like this is the best feeling merino cashmere nylon that I've ever felt. It is so squishy and it's a round, kind of like a four ply yarn, but the way that it blooms and just like fluffs up after you dye it, like, like there's nothing like it. Um, here we go, we got, so this colorway, uh, Rebecca from Chemnitz, <laughs> let's mention her, uh, she came by the live stream, hello if you're watching, uh, and we were joking around and everybody who was in there was familiar with who she was anyway and um, it came up to like, oh let's do a Chemnitz colorway. So I said, okay, well, she's like, well, if you're going to do a Chemnitz colorway, it needs to be pink and blue and purple. <laughs> so I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> so I grabbed a fluorescent pink because I don't dye with that often enough, and a blue and a dark purple, and it came out so stinking cute. Like, it is, a, you can see, like, the halo here. You can just see how soft it is. Um, so this is called Fizzing Wisbees. There was a debate there were several people. There was the side of Fizzing Wisbees and there was the side of Winky the House Elf. So I put up a poll on Instagram and Fizzing Wisbees won the poll to be named the colorway. So shout out to all you Fizzing Wisbees folks. But it is quite lovely. It almost reminds me of cotton candy. But that's why I kind of felt like, oh, it's right to name it after a candy. So Fizzing Wisbees are like a sherbet, sher sher sherbet treat. <laughs> sherbet. <laughs> <laughs> um, a sherbet treat that makes you float off the ground a few inches. And of course, it's in the Harry Potter universe because why would I die anything else? So, fizzing wisbees. And the first round of live dyeing, everyone was like blue and purple. So I said, okay, we're going to do beau baton. So beau baton is one of my most cherished colorways. I love this color. Uh, it's got two shades of blue. It has like blue and teal and purple and gray. We just want to get in on those speckles. Heck yes. But just like, look at that. Just, oh, just, oh, I just want to like, oh, I shouldn't put all the yarn on my face. It's not very smart. Okay. Then we have two last colors here and an empty bag. So this is Forest of Dean, which is a newer colorway. I dyed it. I think I might have a couple left on Everyday Sock that I didn't pull off the shelf. But um, here it is on the MCN. And again, it's just plush is the word for it. I should have called this plush sock because it literally is the most plush thing I've ever felt. 
So it's an earthy tone color, uh, mostly green, some brown, and some yellow uh, to kind of tie it all together. So that Forest of Dean. And then finally, the Argonath, which is the only non-Harry Potter themed color that I tied last week. Um, so on stream we had a request for a Lord of the Rings color and so I pulled up you know just Lord of the Rings and someone mentioned the Argonath and I was like oh that would be good so I pulled up the pictures and if I can find the picture I used for inspiration I'll put it here I think it was an artist rendering of the, the scene from the movie um, <clears throat> but this has stone kind of gray it's almost like a gray toned base with a bit of like neutral in there with a sandy brown color a nice green and a bit of a watery blue so the green is really um i can't remember which color i used i wrote it down in my dye journal so i can uh, replicate this color but it was so lovely maybe it was moss I can't remember exactly what I used, but it's quite lovely. A nice little masculine color and very speckly, not super variegated, not super bold. Uh, I think it will stitch up really nicely. So I dyed it on three 100 gram skeins and then 150 gram skein because I didn't want to just have three skeins in the pan. Uh, so the person who requested it actually purchased two of these skeins, one of the 100 grams and one, hundred, one 150 gram skein, which was nice. So I'm glad that she was able to get her hands on it, but we do have a couple left in the shop if you want one. Okay. So, this podcast has been much longer than I anticipated. I've had more to talk about than I ever could have imagined, uh, even though I've done very little <laughs> over the last month. But I did want to just extend, again, a nice warm thank you to everyone who continues to support my shop and for everyone who's here on YouTube who continues to subscribe to my channel, even though uploads are a little more infrequent than I would like them to be, but, you know, still coming once a month or so. Um, and I'm glad I can share this journey with you and I'm glad I can share my time with you here um, in this little space on YouTube. I've tried to end this video like 50 times that I've had to cut out because I forget how to end my own videos. Is that bad? <laughs> I think that's pretty bad. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It uh, really helped me out. I hope you have a great day, and I hope that you're enjoying your week and that you enjoy the spring weather if it has arrived where you are, as it has for us. So I will see you guys in my next video in a relatively short time period, hopefully not two months away, hopefully within the next month. So I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Bye!